Hey you guys, don't sleep on our August giveaway. This month we're giving away the Reimagine Pack. And this time, there's gonna be four lucky winners. That's right, four lucky winners. And each winner will get to pick one of the pairs from the Reimagine Pack. We got the Royals, White Cements, Chicago's, and the Breads. All you gotta do is subscribe to Rejuvenator and drop a comment down below which pair you would pick and the size. Giveaway runs till the end of August. Good luck, everyone. Today, we're gonna be working on one of the rarest 85 Jordan ones to ever come out. Not the Storm Blues, but the Kentuckys. You don't see these every day, these shoes need a lot of work, so for this big task, I brought out my good homie, A1 Restorations. What's up, Vic? Very happy to be here once again, and I'm excited to work on these. These things are cooked, but we want to go about the restoration the right way. They need new soles, ankle padding. What's the first step in this process? First, we're going to take off all the stitching on the soles and get to removing them. It's really tough to get them off, so we're going to go ahead and use some flatheads and pry them off. All right guys, as you can see, that was a struggle getting those soles off. Took a lot of work, had to use suppliers, flatheads. Honestly, during that process, we should have been wearing a mask. The insides of the soles are disgusting. Fine dust, the air unit, the polyurethane, all of that is complete dust. Stuff that you should not breathe in. So after we're done talking, we're gonna put these back on. We gotta remove the bottom boards so we can access the sock liner material. The padding inside the sock liner material is super crunchy, it's stiff. We gotta take all of that out so we can replace it with some new one. Again, this is a dirty process, so we're gonna be wearing masks. Any tips for this process? So the sock liner is attached by this stitching right here, and we gotta remove it so that we could lift it up and get as much access to the inside of the sock liner as possible in order to replace all the foam that goes in there. That's right, you can use a seam ripper or an X-Acto knife for this process. Just don't cut into the leather. All right, so far so good. We got the majority of the stuff cleaned out from the inside. It's still pretty dirty. We gotta spend some more time scraping, brushing, and using the compressor to fully clean it out before we install new parts. There's still one more thing we gotta replace, and that's the heel counter area. As you can see in this area, it's super crushed. We gotta replace it completely. So this is what the heel counter looks like once it's taken out, and without it, you can see that there's zero structure. So we're gonna have to go ahead and get some material that's just like this cut it out and replace it. We'll do that in a bit. Right now, we gotta get this shoe all cleaned up. All right, now that the internals are all cleaned out, let's give the shoe a good deep clean from the outside. The shoe is pretty creased up in the back area and the toe box, so I'm gonna put it on the last, so while I'm cleaning it and it dries, it can hopefully get some of the shape back. We're only gonna be using our rejuvenator solution and the soft bristle brush for this cleaning. Hey. Mm, bro, oh, I can man. do it myself. My bad, bro, I'm trying to help. Come on. Shoes are all cleaned up. We're gonna put these outside underneath some Arizona sun to dry them within 10 minutes. While they're drying, let's work on the donors. The donors we're gonna be using for this project are the 85 Georgetown ones. The reason why we're using these is because it has the closest colorway that matches the Kentuckys and it has the 85 shape closest to the originals. Cool, let's start deconstruction. We gotta take the laces out, insole, and start yanking out the thread from the midsole. Where's my scissors? To cleanly remove the uppers from the soles, I'm gonna pour some acetone outside, let it sit for a few minutes, then I'm gonna come back inside with the steamer to finish the job. That's what we need. Donor soles are removed, super easy stuff. As is, the sole is way too white. The uppers are heavily used. We gotta age them. 
For this, we're gonna be using the coffee method. While I do this step, A1's gonna be out there prepping the uppers. To age the soles, I'm gonna get the coffee ready, put the soles into the pan, pour the coffee on it, wait about five to 10 minutes until I get that perfect age tone. Yeah, these look great. All right, let's go rinse these. While Vic is inside enjoying the AC, he sent me outside to do all the dirty work, which means I'm gonna be using a Dremel to remove all the old glue on the Kentuckys and all that old gunk. So that way we could get a good bond when we put the glue. I'm not sure what A1's doing out there. He's taking a long time, but I gotta keep it moving. Next step, using the Dremel with the metal drill bit, we gotta remove all the old glue from the inside of the sole. Luckily, the coffee stained the glue, so it should be really easy to know where to Dremel. So we got everything prepped, the uppers and the soles. So what's next, Vic? The next step is to replace the internals. We'll start with the heel counter. The old one is toes, we're not gonna use that one. Luckily, I got the pattern piece to a new heel counter right here for the specific size. I also got some brand new heel counter material. Basically what I'm gonna do is lay it down on the material, trace it out, cut it, then we'll glue it onto the shoe. Heel counters are fully cut out. Now with some bar super stick, we'll apply it onto the heel counters and the inside of the shoe and let it cure. While the heel counters are curing, we're gonna trace out the pattern for the padding and cut it out. So we got the heel counter glued in and the padding cut out. Now it's time to glue it in. A1 killed it with the padding swap. It's nice and soft. All that crunchiness is fully gone. Now we still need to lock in the sock liner. Remember the thread that we removed from the side panels on all four shoes? Well, we got to replace it now. It looks good on the outside, but it also locks in the sock liner from the inside. Now the next step is to apply glue to everything, the soles, the uppers, and the lasting boards. All right, bro, I'll do the right shoe. I'll do the left. So the glue process could be a long and tedious step, but we gotta make sure that we do it right and get every single inch of the shoe and every part. This will make sure that when we put the shoes back together, they'll last for years to come. Glue's fully applied. You're gluing these, right? Yeah. All I'll right, bro. Together. So what's the first step? So we're gonna measure everything up, make sure that it lines up correctly, heat it up, section by section, heel first, then the toe, and sides after. So I have to do the toe first, then the heel. Why do you do that? I don't know, I think it's just how I started and I just stuck to it. All right, man, sounds good. Once that part's installed, we'll insert these. Yep. And I'll take care of the stitching. All right, A1's done with the easy part, now on to the hard part. We're gonna reapply the stitching with the sewing gall and some aged thread.
Are you judging my work, anyone? We did a good job. Proud of you, buddy. Don't touch me, bro. <laughs> this restoration is basically complete. The last step, which is really important, we gotta spray some mink oil all over the leather. Again, these shoes are almost 40 years old. We wanna make sure they last another 40 years. So we're gonna spray a heavy coat on both sneakers, let it sit for a couple hours so the leather can absorb the mink, and then whatever's left, we'll brush it in. All right, last step we gotta do is lace them up. These laces are original to the 85s, so I gave them a good deep clean. They are aged, but they go nicely with the rest of the shoe. All right, bro, after a few days, we're finally done. What do you think? I think they came out great, Vic. We did a lot of work. It took a long time, but they really came out great. Dude, there's a few things I love about this restoration. The first one being, we kept this shoe for the most part as original as possible. If you look at it, the uppers, we just gave them a good clean. We kind of restructured the shoe. If you guys remember, this back area on both shoes were completely crushed, but after replacing the heel counter area, we gave it some beautiful structure. And not just that, the collars area as well. A1 did a great job with the padding swap. Doesn't sound crunchy anymore. They're 100% comfortable now. They're soft, they're wearable. They got new soles, new air units, pretty much new internals. That way they last another 20, 30 years. That's right, these 85s are built like tanks. Now I'm sure you guys are wondering, why didn't we paint the uppers on these shoes? There's a couple of reasons. For one, the owner did not want any paint on these shoes, and that's kind of a good thing. When it comes to 85s, it's kind of a hit or miss. You don't want to start painting the shoes. That devalues the sneaker, and in this case, the owner of these is going to wear them as is. And I agree, in this case, I think it's better to leave it as is. Thanks again for having me, Vic. I'm really happy that I got to work on these with you, especially since I've never worked on this colorway. You know I've worked on a lot of 85s but now I got to add another one to the list. Nah, thank you, A1. This was a lot of fun. We hung out for a whole week, took care of the Tokyo Fives, took care of this restoration, ate some good food, learned a lot of good tricks from you. This was great, bro. Amazing as always, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice one, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a comment on which 85 you want to see me work on next. This is Vic Almighty. A1 Restoration. We'll catch you guys on Monday. See you guys.